Long Island managed to dodge Floyd's fast-moving bullet yesterday and woke up with less damage than officials had expected. The North Shore was hit the worst along its Nassau Suffolk County border. Trees down power lines, leaving 128,000 customers in the dark over the last 24 hours. Phone service has also been knocked out. LIPA's chairman says at least 5,000 more outages can be expected because of high winds and falling trees. Over on the South Shore at Point Lookout Beach, there was considerable beach erosion. We lost between 50 and 80,000 cubic yards of sand, and this was with a moderate storm. Fire Island, which evacuated about 1,500 people, escaped with only damage to some homes in Atlantic. Utility crews have been working round the clock trying to restore power to thousands of people left in the dark. Last check, here are the number of outages we can report. Orange and Rockland counties reporting 32,000 outages. Con Ed is reporting over 10,700 people are without service. And in New Jersey, PSE and G is reporting that 82,000 homes are still in the dark. As uh, we know now, there are some major flooding problems throughout New Jersey. It may not be until Sunday morning before power is completely restored. Well, Floyd dumped so much rain on um, North Carolina. And, oh, and, and Mayor Giuliani, by the way, had no regrets about his actions to warn residents and commuters about the possible dangers posed by Floyd. Grand Central Terminal was quite crowded at mid-afternoon yesterday after Giuliani recommended that businesses close early and that all non-essential government came. workers be sent home. Great shape. And uh, the fact is that uh, having considerably less people moving at any one time, particularly during rush hour, uh, I think was, in retrospect, a uh, very, very good idea given the problems that Metro North had. Just think of the, the mayor also congratulated the emergency ran. management team for the their preparations. And Floyd dumped so much rain on North Carolina, the storm created one of the state's worst ever natural disasters. Emergency workers using boats and helicopters have had to rescue hundreds of people. And as Grant Rampey tells us, not everyone made it out alive. Rescue crews lift the body of an elderly man from floodwaters today. This is video of him yesterday in his van as he tried to make it through a submerged stretch of interstate. The highway patrol raced in to throw him a rope, but it was too late. The van was swept into a gully with water 15 feet deep. I know they want to get home. I know they want to go to, and look at their property, but it's not worth one's life. For many, getting home has been all but impossible, and floodwaters continue to rise. Meanwhile, many who stayed home during the storm are finding they can't get out. In some parts, freshly formed lakes cover homes, farms, even an entire shopping mall. From Oak Island in the south part of the state to Rocky Mount in the northeast corner, Floyd's made this place a mess. From what I understand, it was 54 since last time water was up anywhere close to this. Suddenly, hundreds of neighborhoods are cut off to cars and trucks. Paddle boats are proving their worth. About three foot deep. The more than 3,000 National Guardsmen who've come in to help have their hands full, and with power still cut off for up to 400,000 people, many say drying out after Floyd could take weeks, maybe months. I'm standing next to the Cape Fear River here in North Carolina, where it's predicted the water level could rise between 4 and 12 feet overnight, causing still more flooding tomorrow. So the worst may not be over yet. In Wilmington, North Carolina, Grant Rampey, WB11, News at 10. And flooded out residents of one North Carolina community are thanking the National Guard after some dramatic and very terrifying rescues. Heavy rain from Tropical Storm Floyd drove the Tar River near Dunbar, North Carolina, as much as 13 feet above flood stage. Military helicopters hoisted people from the tops of cars and rooftops of homes. Small boats also used in the rescue operation. By Friday afternoon, military helicopters had rescued 400 people. And still to come, tonight's other news, a deadly accident in Manhattan. A crane comes crashing to the ground, killing a construction worker. A horse goes on a wild ride through the streets of Manhattan until cops catch up with him. 